Welcome back everybody. Today we are fishing the San Joaquin River. This section of river stretches from below Bryant Dam at Millington Lake and ends up at the Fresno or Mendota Slough and acts as the border between Fresno and Madera County. It gives a glimpse as to what the old river bottoms used to look like with sycamore trees and overgrown brush piles. It's much different than the businesses up above. Home to wildlife such as deer, coyote, and geese, this lazy stretch of river is also home to warm water and cold water fish. You'll find bass, carp, and catfish, along with stripers and even salmon here. Its proximity to town gives those who don't have the option of driving out far a chance to fish for very real game fish. Today's target, of course, was panfish. After finding a nice little inlet, we set up with a very simple rig of just a worm on a dropper loop and a weight down below. Hopefully something bites. As far as technique goes, this is just simple fishing. Light line, spinning reels, and a jig and pause technique. The water's still cold, so most fish are still in pre-spawn mode. With an ever so soft bite, this fish took it when I was actually holding it still. Remember, with light line and small hooks, the drag is all important. Wow! What is it, Louis? With a medium light rod and six pound line, even small fish are a good challenge. Wow! Look at that. First fish of the year. Although he seems small at first, this fish actually measured out to be 13 and three quarter inches. Good job! Real cold fish. See, told you to come here. Good job. It's worth it, huh? There's the first fish right there of the day. Now this is going to be a controversial video because we're taking a bass. <sighs> but yes, now bass are actually good eating. Uh, especially after winter like this when they're nice and plump and full. This is a male, so uh, no need to endanger the, you know, the population. And they are good. They taste, I mean, you know, it's it's a sunfish. How do you know it's a male? Family. Huh? How do you know it's a male? Uh, usually the small ones like this are, are males uh, around this around this time of year. Hmm. The big ones are females, and if it's a big one, I wouldn't keep it. But I'm going to keep this guy, take him home, I'm going to cook him. Bass is good eating, contrary to popular belief, especially out of a clean, nice river like this and not swampy areas. So I'm going to take him home. All right. All righty. See you guys later. Now that we've got the fish home, it's time to clean it. I'm going to be staking this fish, so that means no filleting, and that means skin on. Now, fact of the matter is, I don't own a fish scaler, and shame on me, but then again, that tells you how much I actually keep fish these days. But a serrated knife, or a fork, or a spoon will actually do that okay too. I like to make sure that all the scales are off. That includes the ones that are in the hard to reach areas too. Aside from swallowing a bone, getting scales in your mouth when you eat fish is about the next worst thing. Take note, if I had bled the fish while we had it on the stringer, it would not be bleeding like this. Next is to dislodge the gill plate and the gills. And with one motion, grab the gills and with them, pull out the whole contents of the stomach and the intestines. 
I just slit the stomach, took out the gills. This is an extremely fat fish. There's something in the stomach here. Seems like it's kind of old. Another crawfish. Let's see what this fish has been eating on. Seems kind of seem to be full. Not algae. Old. Whatever the heck it's eating is kind of old. Oh, I got something here. Oh, a little baby fish. It's been a couple days since it last ate, but little, some kind of little minnow. That's Makes me think this fish is probably coming from kind of deep, deep down. Remove that. I'm gonna okay. use this half over here for uh, the foiled fish, so fish and foil. And then I'm going to use that half over here. I'm going to fry that other half, so we'll split it in the middle. Shark bleed helps. So, we'll fry that half. And since there's only two of us here, Chop up some herbs. Cilantro is looking a little scraggly. Can't feel cilantro here. And then uh, let's get some uh, green onion. That's here too. Breathing through my mouth right now so that I don't tear up simply for the fact that the onion affects your olfactory system. That is, if you breathe in the fumes through your nose, that's actually causing you to cry. But this onion is so pungent that it is affecting me either way. Wowza. Oh my gosh. Oh my eyes. Two Thai bird chilies. I don't they call them bird chilies because they look like a bird's beak or something. Coriander seed. Buy it at your uh, local Mexican aisle. Banana leaf. You can buy that frozen at the Asian market. Or you can go pluck yourself some banana leaf. They can really smell it. They smell kind of like, uh, I don't know, celery? Nice and toasted. There we go. Just grind them in there. Oh yeah, grinding real nice. Ooh, I can really smell them now. It's gonna add a real different flavor to the dish. This, this is the defining character of the dish right here. Never used uh, coriander seeds before. They have a very distinct earthy green smell to them. It's that life hack that holds in the roll. So I'll use four layers. So, rinsed off and wiped off banana leaf. I guess you're supposed to wipe it off, but that's okay. I rinsed it and scrubbed it a little bit. A layer of herbs <clears throat> right down the center. Two at the bottom, two on the top. There we go. Stuffed fish. Put some herbs. Mmm, -hmm, they're delicious. And coriander. She found ginger in her pot. 
or plant pot that is. Anyways, throw them in each of the cavities. Oh yeah. Stick it in. Talk to this guy. You want to do it Andrew's way? I'm going to let you do it. Andrew just folded it. sit on there for an hour. So let's go to the picky right here. One hour. Okay. Sitting on here. I can already hear it. Alrighty. You know what that means. Been an hour. We can shut this guy off. Get one hand here. I'm sure it's really hot. Okay, one hand here. Oh shit, I'm spilling. And right in there. All right. Oh yeah. That steam's coming out of there. Literally a test of one's chopstick. Oh, almost had it. There we go. Oh man, I can smell the banana leaf. Oh, and look at that right there. Isn't that just beautiful with that meat? Oh, so good looking. Open that guy up. Oh, fish, sticky rice, together. Ah. That piece of fish. Ooh, it's hot. Fish is crazy hot. All right, fish and sticky rice. Mmm, mmm. Tell you what, that is never not good. So here we go again. Sticky rice. Very hot and fresh fish. Hot and fresh. Right there. Straight out of the jungle. That is jungle fish. Mmm. Oh. I was saying out there that bass, largemouth bass, is fishy. And uh, if you catch it in a swamp, probably. But out of a nice clear river. Especially after a long winter. Yeah, this year. Mm, or boom. Careful with that when you do whole fish. Yeah, after winter, most of these fish are. Really, really clean tasting. Oh, so good. I wish there's some more juice. I did that. It's sticky rice into the juice, but. And that's it for this episode. Thanks everyone for watching. We have a lot of content up. Only problem is we just don't have very much time to do a lot of editing and like posting. But I promise you, we will get them up. Stay tuned for more hunting, fishing, and mushroom hunting videos as well. If you're tired of waiting, you can always check out our Instagram where we have stuff posted daily.